So how does the technology developed right here at Hebrew University by Pro Professor Peleg and his brilliant, brilliant team weave its way into the fabric of American policing and not only make us safer, but makes us smarter? Let me grab my clicker. <laughs> my name is Sergeant John Michael Benchamal O'Hare. I am the director of the Capital City Crime Center in Hartford, Connecticut in the United States. I'm tasked with keeping an eye on my city, utilizing technology on a daily basis. So it was an overwhelming task when I first started. Uh, I had a robust camera network deployed throughout my city. I realized I could not alone watch everything all the time. So we need something to help us. So we looked to our friends here at the Hebrew University. And we looked at Professor Pellick and his brilliant team. And I was, I was introduced to this technology known as BriefCam. Now what is BriefCam? Let's take a look. There are more than 350 million video surveillance cameras worldwide, recording petabytes of raw footage every day that is barely watched. What if you could transform all this unwatched video into real-time, actionable intelligence? Crimes would be solved faster. Cities would be safer. Companies would serve customers better. You have the footage. Why not put it to work? Introducing BriefCam. An easy to use, powerful software solution, enabling rapid review, search, and analysis of video content. Hours of video? Review it in minutes. Looking for something specific? Quickly pinpoint objects of interest by type, gender, size, color, direction, speed, and more. Slow to respond? Get real-time alerts of critical events. Missing critical operational metrics for decision support? uncover invaluable operational insights for fact-based decision-making. In-store consumer behavior analytics? It's finally possible. Security, operational, and management teams are now more effective than ever with BriefCam. Law enforcement organizations are identifying suspects in record time and responding to threats more quickly. Smart cities are optimizing traffic and pedestrian patterns keeping their residents safer and spurring economic growth. Transportation companies are proactively protecting travelers and improving their travel experience. Retailers are preventing loss and gaining merchandising intelligence. Imagine the value that BriefCam will bring to your organization. Think you've reached the limit of what video can do for you? Time to change your thinking. Get smarter, faster. Brief Camet. That's it in a nutshell. I could probably spend four days talking about this technology because it, I think it touched all the bases there. It's a comprehensive program that does everything. Spur economic growth. Make us a safer city. Make us smarter. Make us faster. Make us more efficient. Make us better. I'm going to show you how I was introduced to this program and how it's kind of grown uh, through my department and where I see it going around the United States and around the world. So first and foremost, some of the things that BriefCam does cover, we protect a lot of national institutions in the United States. It's at the Statue of Liberty. It was deployed during the Boston Marathon bombing. When it was critical, when seconds counted, we needed to find somebody. We needed to find those suspects. They were on the run. Utilizing BriefCam, that, to that technology made it simple. Made it, brought all this, this aggregated video data, which would have taken months and months to watch. And it was done in days. And you know, the, I think we know the solution here. We know what happened at the end. And that was a lot to do with the technology here. But for me, it was a very small deployment. I have a very small city. I'm lucky. I get to work in a, I call it a Petri dish. I get to see things and grow things slowly, kind of in a lab environment, and see how they progress, and kind of really kick the tires on a program. And for me, this is what sold me first. I had a big park. I got a lot of activities in my park. This is actually a festival. I have a lot of things to deal with in this park. I have missing children, which I know as a parent, I'm frantic if I turn around and don't see one of my kids in the supermarket for five minutes. When a, when a child goes missing in an environment like this, how essential is a program like this? Well, there we go. Look at all this data in the background. I'm looking for somebody in a green shirt, and I need to find them immediately. I get a parent calling me in on a distress call. I just need somebody wearing green. My child's wearing a green shirt. I don't remember anything else. So I eliminate everything else. I go right to my video cameras, and I eliminate everything except the green. 
And you can see, the only things moving in this video now are just the green objects. I can isolate, I can localize, I can find, I can find that child. In fact, I did it last Saturday when we had a festival in our city, 34 seconds from the time the child was reported missing to the time we returned that child to its parent. How critical is that? I mean, it wasn't anything sinister in that case, the child just wandered off, but we know what that feels like. What a comforting feeling when we can do something like that. When I saw this, I realized how powerful this was, that it could work through all that noise and go right to my dad and extract exactly what I was looking at. This would have taken me a long time to sit and watch. Here's another thing I use it for, and this is kind of, I feel like, I, I, I jokingly refer to myself as a doctor. I'm reading an MRI in this case because I'll explain what I'm looking at. This is a drug market. This is how I'm disrupting drug markets in my city. This is, a, a, this is where a drug dealer hangs out in front of a store. And you can see the darker red spots on the edges there in the peripheral there. So what that tells me right there is in, in the U.S., when they hide drugs, they don't necessarily hide the drugs on them, but they hide them in a certain area. And it takes a few seconds for them to hide it on the car tires, as they do on the left, or pull the brick out of the wall, as they did on the right. So they have to stand there a little bit longer than they would when they're typically moving back and forth. The darker red tells me where they stand. So now I can localize. This is four hours of acti activity I can watch in seconds, localize it, extract that video, see them pulling that brick out of the wall, see them putting those drugs on the tire. So now when I go in, we just go, we grab the individual, like, I don't have anything on me, we're like, it's on the tire. That's not mine. Oh, it's yours. We're going to show you why we know it's yours in a second. This is great for disrupting drug markets, and drug markets are a plague in, this, in, our, in our cities in America. This helps us take back our blocks one by one. This is when we know where we're going. This is when we don't know where we're going. This is another, another block, uh, a lot of crime, a lot of activity. Nobody's reporting exactly where it is, but I know. We know what's going on in this area. This is 24 hours of video. I'm going to watch here in 15 seconds. First, I know people that utilize drugs or purchase narcotics in the cities go on foot. So I eliminate all the other noise. As you can see, you could do refinement. So I'm now just looking at people. I don't want cars. I don't want motorcycles. I just want to know people. 24 hours of video. I want to know where they go. See the deep red? Tell me what door they went to. Guess how many people went to that door in 24 hours? I'm going to count. I localize. I identify two or, I'm sorry, 313 people went to that door in 24 hours. What's going on? Are they making good cookies? I doubt it. We know what's going on. And this right here just saved me 32 man hours, the old-fashioned way, going out on the street, setting up early in the morning so they didn't see us, climbing on a rooftop like I used to, watching, calling things out. This was done at my desk the following morning. I processed 24 hours of video, and I hit three buttons, and I knew where I was going that day. I had the op plan done in eight minutes. Had my guys out there. We actually executed a search warrant, took that house out of that neighborhood, win these blocks back, piece by piece, building by building, block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood. When you eliminate the problem, you can start to grow. So I talked about how we, we look at it from a, uh, a narcotics interdiction type of environment. But what it also does is we have, it solves crimes, uh, heinous crimes, murders, things of that nature. Individual on the top left here is actually going to shoot and kill the individual to his left with the, with the baseball hat on right outside of this interior surveillance camera that is not owned by my city. The top right is the video we have of his vehicle leaving. We have a, a brief identification of that, video, of that vehicle, uh, very loose. It's a white SUV, a few other identifying features. So what do I do? I run that area for 48 hours. I run 48 hours of video. Now, first, let me just tell you something. To watch video, after 17 minutes, you zone out. And then what cops typically do is we go back, and we hit double speed. And then we hit quadruple speed. And then we just say, oh, we, di we didn't see it. We give up. It's too much to watch. You can't watch 48 hours of video. It would take you almost a week and a half because you would zone out. So 48 hours of video, I process it. See in the bottom left? That's four hours before he committed that homicide. Four hours before I have him on video. Guess what he does? Stops at the stoplight. Stops at the traffic light. Pulls up underneath my camera. I got his face in the car. Now I know his license plate because when he drives away, I get it. Now I know he's hiding in the neighboring state because that plate comes back to Massachusetts, which is north of Connecticut, where I live. Go up to Massachusetts, we get him, he's incarcerated. Zero percent solvability rate, crime solved. Justice to the family, economic growth, because uh, the Urban Institute and RAND both put a homicide unsolved as an eight million de uh, eco a detriment in economic loss to a city. Per homicide, that's lost wages, that's reputation damage, 
Nobody will come to your city when there's homicides and, and start a business. When you solve a homicide, you drop that down. You drop it down exponentially to about 10% of what it would be had that homicide been unsolved. That's money that can be repurposed and respent. This one. Now, this is near and dear to me because I do have two daughters. This is a gentleman in the top right who was driving around a bus stop <coughs> trying to pick up a 10-year-old girl and pull her into his vehicle. He wasn't wearing any pants when he was doing this, by the way, either. He's trying to lure her in. He's an adult. She's a child. He's grooming her. He's convincing her to walk towards the vehicle. A, an adult intervenes, thank God, and pulls the child away. He flees the scene. The only video I have is him fleeing the scene, driving around the stoplights, flying out of there as fast as he could. No chance of working forensically on the license plate because we can't even see, barely see the vehicle. So we run two hours of video prior through brief camp. I see him an hour earlier going into the scene. And just like the other gentleman, prior to committing the crime, this is prior to the crime, he stops at the stoplight. He obeys the rule of traffic. I get his license plate. We put that out. Immediately our patrol officers stop him before he's actually even out of the, the vicinity. And now it's a 10-year-old girl versus an adult. And we have an adult, another adult to corroborate the 10-year-old girl's story. But still, you present that in court. He's now in custody. He goes in front of a judge. And the little girl goes, by the way, he's done this before. He's like, no, I've never done this before. I didn't even do it this time. She's like, uh, no, he's done it before. Asking the 10-year-old girl, when did this happen before? She says, I don't know, 10 days. She doesn't know. It happened before, a, a long time ago. So we run weeks and weeks of video between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. We just process that video us utilizing brief camp. We find him 10 days prior and 11 days prior circling those same blocks in that same white van, probably about to do the same thing. Now that changes his story, because now we've proven him to be a liar. And now he stays in jail where he belongs. So as a parent, I can appreciate that. And I can see the power in that, saving a young girl's life. Because we all know that would not have had a happy ending. And had he been able to get out of jail and talk his way out or get a low enough bond, we may be dealing with him again. We're not dealing with him anymore. This is the power of this program. This is a program that makes us safer. How does it make us smarter? I'm going to tell you, we're kind of doing a whole business intelligence model throughout our city. We're learning how pedestrians walk through our city so we can put art around our city, so we can open storefronts where they walk, so we can engineer crosswalks where they jaywalk, so I could put a police officer in front of a school because even though we thought we knew where the kids are crossing, now utilizing brief cam, I can identify where they're crossing, where they're running across the street, where the cars are speeding. How do I engineer around that? We have a college, a university, Uni University of Connecticut in our city. Their parking garage is across the street from the busiest street in the city. I know when I was late for school and I was going to college, and if I had to stop at a red light and I would look both ways, I'm not waiting for that, for that walk sign. I'm running. Well, we're going to show them how many run every day, how many cars speed down that street. Let's build a footbridge. What's the harm, right? Nobody gets hurt. No harm, no foul. It's beautiful. We're going to engineer behind the scenes. No one's going to know why we're doing it but they're just going to know it's easy. I'm doing it with my ballparks. I want people to come to my city. I have a baseball stadium right in the middle of the city, beautiful baseball stadium. I want people to go to the parking lot, not wait five minutes to cross the street because that's another busy street, not run across the street and get yelled at by a police officer and now say, screw this, I'm not coming back. The cops are mean. That wasn't a good experience. I want to engineer footbridges and walks and tunnels around that as well so they could be sitting home on a Saturday afternoon and say, hey, let's go to Hartford and spend some money. It's really easy. Just park and walk. It's real, real simple. That's one way to do it. We want to give it to our businesses, like I said, because they want, I want to show every business from my street side cameras, give them the business intelligence model. You come to Hartford, you're going to get this for free. I'm going to tell you how many times people walk by your store and don't go in. How many times they stop in front, look in your glass, and continue on. Change your marketing strategy. Put a menu in the window. I have kids. If I walk by a restaurant and there's no kids menu in the window, I'm moving. I'm going to the next one because my kids are hungry. Do th little things like that. Draw people in. Keep them here. Come and stay. Come and play. Come and spend money. Where do you hang out in the park? Do I need to put more lighting there? Where do you go when you leave the theater? Do I need to put a coupon kiosk and maps out there? Buy one, get one free at the restaurant down the street. Don't come in for one event. I want you to come and stay. And I really want you to spend money because I want to generate. We want to spur economic growth here. We want to make everybody safe. But hey, the bottom line is we're a business. We're in the business of giving people uh, a commodity but in exchange for them coming in and utilizing 
and spending their money in our city because that will drive us all upward, make us better, make us smarter, make us safer, make us faster. So a, a few examples here, as you can see, that's my streetscape. That's my walkways. Those are my restaurants. Where do people hang out in front? Change your strategy. We have a happy hour in the United States. Usually on the afternoon, 4 to 6 p.m., the bars change their prices to drop people in. Well, I'm going to show them. Shift your happy hour an hour back because all your pedestrians are walking by an hour before you start. You're missing everything. Things like that. Get them to come in. Come and stay. Come and play. Bottom right, put the cop out there because that's the intersection that people are walking across. See all the people walking in the middle? The crosswalk's on the left. Nobody's paying attention. Police officer out there makes us all safer. That's it. That's how we do it. So I thank you to Hebrew University for developing Brief Camp. Thank you very much.